Hi everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel Networking Made Easy by TS Srinivas. So in continuation with our uh, lecture series of <coughs> guided transmission media. Okay. So today let us learn more about uh, another new media that is nothing but the coaxial media. It is also a copper media comes under the category of the copper media. So if you see the requirement of any medium, isn't it? Any, what is the main requirement of any medium is its responsibility is to carry the signal from one point to other point with minimum loss. So maximum power has to be transferred to the next point. So that is what is the main requirement. So, so in that particular sense, this particular medium called coaxial cable justifies to maximum. Okay. So why? Because, because of its construction. Okay. So mainly the coaxial cable. Okay. So it looks like this. It's a simple construction of a coaxial cable. Okay. So if you see here, the center, center inner conductor, this is called as a core conductor. This is carrying the actual signal in the coaxial cable. Okay. So generally you find this particular thing is a very solid wire, solid wire. It's a thick. Okay. So then this particular conductor is covered by a insulation material, insulation material. Okay, this one. So this is generally a polyethylene material. Okay, so this is covering this particular main inner conductor. Okay, then comes the outer conductor, the mesh like thing. This is called as a braided outer conductor. Generally, this is made of a copper mesh or sometimes you find uh, aluminium. Similarly, the main conductor is also mostly copper, maybe aluminium coated or steel coated onto this. Okay. So finally, what you find is the first center one is the main conductor. Then comes the insulation. This works as a dial trick. Okay. And here is the outer conductor, which is a copper mesh. Fine. Then you have a outer protection for all this. It's a jacket, protection plastic cover. Generally, it is polyvinyl, made of a polyvinyl chloride. Okay. So because of this construction, what actually is happening is, see what is happening in this is, the main conductor is carrying the signal. Okay. Now, actually the signal which is traveling through this particular uh, coaxial cable, Okay, in the form of a electromagnetic signal. Okay, so that particular signal is available within the inner conductor and outer conductor only within that. Okay, no signal is getting outside this particular cable. So that is the best part of it in the coaxial cable. The signal is confined within the inner conductor and the outer conductor. So because of this particular special feature, so this doesn't come out, it is not exposed to external atmosphere or outside medium. So what is happening is there is no interference, there is no loss of this particular signal. Okay. So any strong signal which is traveling through the cable is not getting radiated outside. There is no radiation loss. Okay. So this is just because of this particular construction feature. Okay. And similarly, because of this mesh, this particular thing, this outer covering and all, even the external interference, external interference is also not affecting the, the main signal. So there are two good futures, you know, the inner signal is also not getting exposed outside and external electrical electromagnetic interference is also not affecting the signal. So that is the main feature of this particular medium called coaxial cable. Okay. So because of this particular feature, you can easily carry any strong signal 
as well as the weak signal also okay this is doing lot of justice carrying the signal from one point to next point okay so now you just see because of this particular feature and another thing another thing this particular insulation it is see what is happening is another very primary thing is the spacing between the inner conductor and outer conductor the spacing between the inner conductor and outer conductor is uniform throughout the cable okay so because of uh, this particular feature the impedance of this particular cable so generally you find the coaxial cables impedance uh, either in the 50 ohms or 70 5 ohms okay so see impedance is calculated for a uh, unit length in a coaxial cable and that is depending upon the inner diameter inner diam the core diameter the core diameter as well as the this insulation the outer diameter of this okay so the ratio of this and the type of dielectric material what you are using determines the impedance of the cable for a unit length okay so see why see the impedance is also very primary requirement of any medium why because so whenever you are transferring the information from one point to the uh, uh, next point the Im impedance should be the source to destination should be impedance should be matched if it is matched then only you will be able to transfer the maximum energy to the destination so that is what is the important property so these all things have been very nicely maintained in the coaxial cable so this is one of the fantastic medium which is available so because of this particular feature mainly you find its application see in connecting radio transmitter and receiver to the antenna see most of the places wherever you see we call this particular coaxial cable as a rf cable why RF cable means what is a RF actually it's a radio frequency any signal high oscillating see generally any because the carrier is a high frequency any signal alternating signal with a high uh, frequency is said to be a RF okay so for carrying this kind of signal okay so what is happening is transmitter see when you want to radiate a signal you have to uh, give it to antenna isn't it so this antenna is not directly connected to the transmitter okay so antenna may be on the uh, uh, outside okay and transmitter is uh, somewhere inside the environment so from the transmitter uh, some medium has required to be carried to the antenna so that's why in all the places you will find this this is the only coaxial medium you have been using for connecting this radio transmitter as well as the uh, the receiver to and fro because from the antenna to the receiver also the coaxial cable is being used you will find the maximum application of this particular coaxial in this particular area and similarly the next uh, place you know where in the laboratories see especially this type of coaxial cable okay since it is having a very large bandwidth and uh, this can be used in any frequency range okay so depending upon uh, because the thickness of this particular inner conductor and this particular outer conductor determines so which type of cable is suitable for which frequency range okay it can be used in VHF UHF frequency range also as well as in the microwave frequency range also so generally what is happening is see whenever you are working with uh, any uh, microwave equipment in the laboratory especially so you will be using the coaxial cables for uh, testing and measuring equipment so whenever you are working with the microwave equipment you will be required to use uh, number of uh, testing and measuring equipment like you will be required to use oscilloscopes okay uh, signal generators yeah spectrum analyzer okay power meters so at different stages you want to change the uh, check the parameters of it so whenever you are uh, connecting the equipment to the test equipment okay you, you will be using the coaxial cables only so you will find this all and another thing is whenever you are trying to connect it from see uh, 
even in the transmitter also when i say a transmitter say transmitter is uh, if i draw one particular box transmitter this is not a simple transmitter one particular other thing so a series of stages will be there okay so this whole thing becomes a part of a transmitter system okay so there are a number of devices involved in this so if you want to connect from one device to next device you use a coaxial cable from this device to this device signal from this device to this so this is how the coaxial cables applications is vital in the all day. this is the only medium uh, you find its uh, maximum application okay so you understood this and you have found it is uh, maximum used in the microwave equipment and the for testing and measuring equipment okay so be, before uh, even in the LAN computer network also you find uh, this coaxial cables have been used see before this uh, pistol pair cable uh, UTP or STP has uh, not available that time the coaxial cables were being maximum used in the uh, LAN Ethernet computer networks okay and even you find in the application on the telephone trunk lines trunk lines as it is is told in the earlier discussion that is means connecting from say from exchange to next exchange so external major uh, I told it's a link which is carrying so it is having a capacity to carry 10,000 Y signals okay so see when earlier when uh, analog signal analog communication was uh, popular so that time the voice signal also was being sent by uh, doing the frequency division multiplexing and that's how it has been sent through the trunk lines okay so that time this particular coaxial line wa was being used as a trunk line okay so because of this particular feature carrying 10,000 voice signals in one particular link okay and similarly when the data communication was popular like you know when PCM has come up even that time its bandwidth was 600 megabits per second so that was also too good to carry maximum uh, uh, signals so maximum traffic can also can be carried on the trunk line by using coaxial cable okay now then comes so these were these applications what we discussed may not be known to the common people okay coaxial medium is existing it may be used uh, because uh, nobody is exposed to this kind of atmosphere isn't it only the engineers and the technical people who are working in that particular place uh, are they are well aware about what this particular coaxial medium is okay but suddenly there was a very big requirement like the TV cable TV okay so now you can say that who is not knowing about the cable TV see suddenly there was a revolution isn't it when people were watching uh, TV just by using an antenna suddenly when the concept of a cable TV has come you just imagine uh, every house the cable TV was available and I'm sure nobody uh, will not be uh, knowing about what is actually cable TV is isn't it so it is the maximum application of the coaxial cable in this particular area in the distribution network okay so especially the cable TV network okay so basically what is a cable TV network you are all aware because you uh, you are viewing entertainment uh, like many TV channels uh, were available uh, for viewing to the customers isn't it but uh, see originally when cable TV was uh, launched this particular concept you listen to the one particular concept called local uh, local cable operator local cable operator so generally what he used to do is there was no standard concept how you it has to be extended this particular to the uh, customers so what he used to do is okay it's a simple practice so he used to install one dish okay so whatever the signal it is coming in one particular angle okay 
So generally you find in one particular angle certain number of channels. There used to be a service provider who are providing this kind of channels. Okay. So you, you have to set this particular dish according to the one particular direction. You will get a set of channels you will be receiving. So first place here is some no lo low noise amplifier used to be there. Then from here one coaxial cable. Then you will have one satellite receiver. See, just for information sake, I am telling it. Uh, even I was also knowing about how this. Uh, um, fortunately, when I was working in defense in some remote area, so I had an opportunity to, to set up this particular KV, cable TV setup for our uh, uh, unit members and all. So it's very simple. It was very interesting that time. So I want to just share this particular knowledge to you guys also. So. Whatever the signal is being received, it is a so low noise amplifier. Then you used to get one uh, satellite receiver because so many signals are there, it's a receiver. So from here, uh, this receiver, if you tune in it, so one particular channel can be detected. You will get a RF output. So this thing you are giving to a TV. Okay, so you can use directly that particular channel, fine. So only one channel. Okay. But now what is the requirement is you have say 10 to 12 channels are there. So for each channel you require number of receivers, satellite receivers. Okay. So here one power divider will be there. Whatever the signal is coming here. So you are giving to all the receivers. Fine. Then again what all the outputs are there. Okay. You are connecting. Okay. See from all these receivers, you are connecting to another combiner. Okay, then finally, whatever the output is there, now this is the main output from one cable operator. Now this you are carrying for distribution to individual residences. So that was a very simple logic, okay, which was adopted by each and every operator. And many years it was running like that. But somebody found it is a foolishness, isn't it? Investing at every area, same equipments. And everybody is receiving, doing the same job. And he is distributing for few houses in one small area. Okay. So this is not cost effective, isn't it? It's not uh, the best way of uh, doing the job. So that's why then came one hybrid TV network. Like, you know, the cable. So there used to be one standard head end. Okay, so one single person is doing this particular job of receiving all the signals. Why everybody should do all these things? Okay, so it's a waste of resources. Okay, so that's why one particular person ha is taking the big responsibility of receiving all the channels. All this kind of equipment will be well at one particular centralized place. Okay, then after doing that, what is he doing is he is having one network. He is setting up in a city. Okay. So what it is doing is it is being distributed all over the city. Okay. And at different location, there is a distribution hub. Okay. Now from that particular hub, you are taking one optic fiber link to one. Okay. One optical node. This is optical node. Okay, what you are doing is, so this particular head end is providing this service to one cable operator. Okay, now what is happening is, see this gentleman earlier, he might have set up his own cable network like this. Okay, this is the cable network. In one particular area, he might have set up like this. Now what is he doing? This all equipment is, means waste. He no need to use it. Now he is getting a connection from here, from this head end, and he is having all the channels. Okay. And well multiplexed. It is multiplexed in frequency division multiplexing. See, this is a very interesting part here. Okay. Now what happens is, each TV channel occupies 6 megahertz bandwidth requires. Each channel requires a 6 megahertz bandwidth. So that's how, uh, through this particular, such a large uh, frequency band, Okay, so many channels are multiplexed in the form of a frequency division multiplexing. 
okay so this is po possible only frequency division multiplexing in analog communication okay so these all channels are available this multiplexed at this particular thing and finally is it is given to this particular operator from here what is it doing already it's a physical connectivity okay what this particular local operator is doing is this signal at respective places he need to amplify it because the signals is bound to be get deteriorated isn't it so that's what say at different once it, once he get is getting this particular signal what is he doing he is amplifying to a maximum level with a main rf amplifier this bigger rf amplifier it's a trunk rf amplifier then after this he starts distributing to different areas okay so when he is connecting to different houses like this so again the signal is going to attenuate at, after certain distance again he require at regular places the line amplifiers okay so you will be uh, see wherever, wherever you are tapping you require taps and sometimes splitters we call you no know, splitters they are nothing but the power distributors okay that's it okay so it is found that at every house one cable connection is reaching okay now at that particular place those days used to have analog uh, tvs so what is the problem is you will be having a tuner okay rf tuner in every tv those days so that's what you change the channel you will get different channels you are getting tuned to each because all the uh, channels are available see like you know once you have this much of range one channel is available from 54 to 60 megahertz then another one 60 to 66 megahertz then 66 to some 72 megahertz like that okay and you find in this particular range uh, from 88 to 108 is fm band fm band that is excluded from this so this is how it has been frequency modulated and given to this so already your rf tuner is there it is uh, able to pick up the uh, the channel available in that particular frequency range and you are able to view this so this is the standard procedure of uh, cable tv distribution by using the coaxial cable so that's how the coaxial cable see all of a sudden when you started thinking of extending uh, this cable uh, cable tv services see see suddenly what was the medium available so this was the best medium which was suitable for the cable tv network fine okay now see here one thing you should understand uh whenever i don't know whether you people have watched uh, as a student you might have not watched about the uh, this particular kind of setup because we are all familiar right now the digital tvs isn't it okay so that time you will find one main drawback in the frequency division multiplexing why because these line amplifiers whatever the amplifiers are there this amplification gain is not uniform throughout the frequency range okay it's very difficult that this amplifier amplifies certain frequencies better certain frequencies uh, it may be amplifying more and certain frequencies less so that's a problem even if you make a measurement at this particular place of uh, uh, with a, there is a instrument to measure the signal strength you will find all the signal strengths are not uniform so that's the reason always the customer used to complain certain channels are coming with a good quality certain with a lot of noise so this was basically a main so that's why the cable operator very carefully chooses the popular channels uh, into the best frequency range and unpopular channels to some other frequency range so that's how he used to manage the things okay but then came the hd tv high definition definition okay so that's what the digital transmission has come into the existence now slowly this whole thing has been replaced with the digital signal now whole this particular signals are being sent through digital so now the time division multiplexing concept will come into this again now here at the customer mess what is required you require a set top box because you require a separate receiver which can uh, detect the digital signals isn't it 
so that's why you require when the digital company means uh, tv has become popular it has made a compulsion that's what they try his time to time it is uh, giving rules and regulations it, uh, okay so that's how from maybe from last year onwards you find that the set top box has made compulsion okay so now you just see that's the difference when the set top box when the digital uh, has become popular now what is the main difference you find is all the channels signal strength is uniform all the picture qualities of all the channels is uniform so now here you can understand the very big difference between the digital communication and analog communication okay so that's how the coaxial cable was very much popular in the cable tv network okay now later came again watch the cable internet access now again see the, the things keeps happening so when suddenly the internet has um, because uh, has become a requirement then how to extend this internet services to the customer so the cable network why because you see why see in the earlier session we have seen the twisted pair okay in the twisted pair you are extended the internet services also to the customer why because already this particular line has been extended for providing a voice service to the customer so definitely the technology will be developed so that why can't we send internet also through this particular medium because when you think of sending through some other medium it becomes too difficult isn't it because already existing network so we will be making good use of it so suddenly see this particular setup has been done for the purpose of sending tv signals isn't it so now why can't we use sending the internet services also so that's how the cable internet access has come into the picture okay now again what is the requirement now this cable which is carrying the uh, tv information also you know along with that the internet is also traveling through this cable for that what you require at the customer premises is the cable modem okay he requires in addition to set up box okay the signal for tv viewing is set up box so and again it is branched and given to the cable modem for internet service okay and again at the service provider you will be having this cable modem termination system okay so this will be communicating with the cable modem okay in order to provide the internet service okay so but this particular coaxial medium is common it is carrying two services now you just imagine if you want to make a comparison with uh, in our earlier session the twisted cable pair cable so it is also carrying it was also carrying two services one was a voice service as well as the data service now here also it is carrying two services okay so that's what the cable internet access also has become popular okay now you see whenever you use this kind of uh, medium for because see here unlike in the uh, twisted pair cable see what's the difference in the twisted pair cable as far as the voice service is concerned every house a independent uh, uh, telephone line is running okay but whereas in the cable network every house individual cable is not running it is being tapped and given okay now so that's a problem so what is happening is whatever the bandwidth available for the internet is shared by all the customers whatever the maximum bandwidth available for each in uh, distribution cable as far as the internet is concerned that is by shared by all the users okay so uh, see that is a reason so then what happens when number of users number of users are using simultaneously your speed will go down so at any particular time you are the only user you may be getting the maximum speed okay so that is what because the service provider doesn't have any control of this particular thing okay so then came one particular concept called statistical multiplexing okay then it is having a control like you know the service provider will have a control on the user okay so that's why you will be having a flexible plans as far as the internet access is concerned 
the person who is uh, uh, paying more money you know he wants more bandwidth so he's paying more money so he will be given more bandwidth the person who is paying less money so accordingly so that's how the number of plans have come into the existence so what kind of speed so then you should have the service provider should have a control on the bandwidth okay this person uh, because this all control will be from the central head end okay so that concept once it is achieved statistical multiplexing so uh, fair usage of uh, bandwidth is given to the customers okay so this is what uh, is the uh, actually the topic is about the coaxial cable so with this kind of examples i'm sure you will understand what is the importance of this particular medium so generally when you look into the guided transmission medium if i say few things like you know what is a twisted pair cable coaxial cable or optic fiber and some small points uh, that's not sufficient isn't it see as a student you are supposed to know what kind of medium it is what is the best features into it at which all its application okay why it is becoming popular this kind of minimum things so any student should supposed to know okay so that is the reason we are discussed so much about uh, this particular medium called coaxial cable okay so that's what as i said uh, this particular coaxial cable is available in uh, uh, its impedance is uh, 50 ohms okay and 75 ohms so generally this 50 ohms impedance uh, cables are available in rg11 and rg12 see these are certain specifications as well as uh, coaxial cables are concerned rg means radio guide okay uh, depending upon the size of the cable like you know rg11 and rg12 you find the cables are thicker okay you find these cables are used in the microwave applications okay thicker cables okay and especially for these cables you find this tnc connectors they are very popular tnc connectors it is like a screwing type okay both the ends it will be having same thing you can see that's what when i told it is connected from one device to other you are connecting to one side and other side is connected and similarly from the transmitter to the antenna also so this is how this tnc connectors you getting you know uh, steel connectors are available beautifully uh, it is done fabricated onto the coaxial cable so generally you find any problems as far as the uh, coaxial cable is concerned there is some issue at the connectors only so time to time if, once it is becoming loose then what happens so the connection between the outer conductor or inner conductor is missing okay so that could be the errors so maintaining means uh, handling that type of connectors is also very important okay so once that is done and uh, see another prime thing in the coaxial cable is this external mesh whatever it is there and the internal connector when these connectors are being made a uh, very care has to be taken that even very one single string also should not make a contact with the main conductor then there will be a huge loss of a signal so that care has to be taken so whenever you find we are you are working practically so uh, you will be finding this kind of issues will be there you have to test very carefully that there should not be any continuity between these two if a small, very small string is also connected means there should be continuity some resistance uh, means insulation will break so there is a loss of signal okay and similarly this 75 ohms impedance cables like rg6 or rg59 okay they are all uh, familiar in the cable tv network okay so there you will be using this kind of connectors especially f type or uhf connectors it may, you might have seen it okay the cable the center uh, cable itself is coming coming outside the connector as a connector itself okay and outside that mesh is connected to the external body okay so that is a simple f type connector which is popular in the cable tv network okay and finally when i told in the computer networks also this particular coaxial cable has been used as a ethernet cables 
So that time you find this BNC connectors are very popular. BNC connector. Just connect and twist it. Even on the computers also used to have a card with a BNC connector input. Okay. So those days in the topology called uh, bus topology or star topology, we will be studying more about it. So you will be finding this coaxial cables were used for setting up the computer network. Okay. So because of its special features, like there is a no, it is having a very greater bandwidth and immunity against external magnetic interference. Okay, either the external interference is also not disturbing the main signal or the main, the signal which is traveling through inside that is also not passing outside the cable. So that's why these cables can be uh, passed through anywhere like you know it can go along with some metal object or something like that. There is no issue. Okay. So that's what is another important thing. and because of this particular good quality either you can use it for uh, transporting uh, um, weak signals as well as the strong signals. Okay. So I think this much information is sufficient as far as the coaxial cable is concerned. So please Keep watching the my sessions regularly. In the next session, we'll talk uh, about another guided transmission media that is nothing but the optic fiber, optical fiber. Thank you. Keep watching. Bye.